As many of you already know, I've spent a lot of time researching dead size weapons and armor, from damage output to recoil and handling. I think I have a pretty good understanding of every weapon in the game, so with that information, I think it's time I answer a question that people have been asking for a long time. What is the best weapon in the game? Well, really, it's an impossible question, because no one weapon is the best at everything. But there still are clearly some weapons that are better than others. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to tell you what the best weapons are for each role or characteristic that players value. The categories that I'm going to cover in this video are CQC, Close Quarters Combat, Sniping, Economics, and the Jack of All Trades. Now I know these aren't the only categories, but I feel like these are the main ones that players are looking for in a weapon. It's also worth mentioning that for each weapon that I pick, you might prefer a different weapon over the one that I choose, and that's fine. Each weapon performs differently in each person's hands. But keep in mind, I've based my opinion for this video off of all the data that I've collected and not off what I actually personally prefer to use myself. So, let's start with the first category, CQC. The most important characteristics for a close quarters combat weapon is a fast time to kill, good weapon handling, and a fast reload or a high magazine capacity, as well as a good recoil pattern. When it comes to TTK, the weapon with the fastest time to kill would be something like a shotgun because of their ability to instantly one-tap people. But they struggle in other areas like weapon handling and especially reloading. On top of that, their time to kill gets very slow against people using heavy armor, to the point where if they are able to get the first hit on you, you are going to die no matter what. So for that reason, I'm going to exclude shotguns. But that doesn't mean they're bad at CQC, they're really great at it, it's what they do well. I just feel like it takes a very slow and defensive playstyle to utilize their strengths, and they really aren't able to perform that well in other areas of CQC, like aggressive pushes, or fast movement in general. So for that reason, I'm going to exclude them. I also want to mention the Grenade Launcher. Uh, now this thing is very good at CQC because of its ability to instantly kill people regardless of their armor, sometimes even killing multiple enemies with one shot. But I don't think it can be called the best at CQC for a few reasons. The first and biggest one being its extreme cost. Now most people who run a Grenade Launcher will get it by looting it from something like a Heli Drop or a Bunker Crate, but if you actually want to buy one, it's going to cost you $400,000. And on top of that, for every round, it's going to cost you another 6000 So if you want to bring at least 10 shots, that's another additional 60 k investment. This is fine if you get lucky and wipe a super cured squad, but it's not too uncommon to actually not make any profit while using this weapon, especially if you bring a lot of ammo. There's also a risk of accidentally killing yourself with your own grenades. This limits you to only being able to engage enemies that are at least 10 to 15 meters away so you don't hit yourself with your own splash, as well as not being able to shoot while near trees, railing, or any other object that the grenade can accidentally get caught on. In the right situation with the correct playstyle, the grenade launcher is extremely overpowering, and I would expect that to happen even more in the future with stuff like base rating. But as far as being an all-around good weapon for CQC, Although it's very powerful, it's not exactly what we're looking for here, and honestly, a similar effect can be achieved by purchasing an F1 grenade for comparatively much cheaper at the trader. So, back to time to kill then. This leaves us with two choices, the P900 and the AR4. Now the P900, or just the P90, which is what I'm going to call it, has an extremely fast time to kill versus unarmored targets at 0.18 seconds, but against armor, it jumps up to 0.31 to 0.37. The AR4 is a bit more consistent with the TTK of 0.21 seconds against unarmored targets, and 0.28 to 0.35 seconds against armor. Personally, I think in this category the AR4 wins, but the difference is just fractions of a second. This is only a couple in-game frames at 60 FPS, so let's compare the two weapons in other categories. In terms of weapon economics, the P90 wins easily. It only costs 260k from a wandering trader compared to 300k for the AR4. The ammo for the AR4 is slightly cheaper, but honestly if you're buying or using these weapons you don't really care about a $500 difference in ammo at this point. So, in terms of weapon handling, the AR4 is slightly better. 
The reticle doesn't move upwards really at all, and it also deviates at a slower rate compared to the P90. But again, it's a very small difference, and overall they're pretty much just about the same when it comes to handling. But when it comes to recoil though, the AR-4 does have better recoil control compared to most other assault rifles, but it does get outperformed by most submachine guns. But the P90 has the best recoil pattern out of really any weapon in the game. It barely, barely moves. So in that category, the P90 wins easily. And for the last comparison of the two, the reload time of the AR-4 is 3 seconds for a full reload and only 2.75 seconds for a tactical reload, which is the fastest reload time out of every other weapon in the game except for pistols and the grenade launcher. The P90 has a much slower reload at 4.75 seconds and does not have any option for a tactical reload, it just does a full reload every time. But this really isn't that bad because you actually have 20 more rounds in your magazine compared to the AR-4. So, in most CQC situations, your enemy will most likely actually have to reload before you. Especially if you're very careful about how you spray. So, although the long reload can put you in a bad situation, if you play it correctly, you can put your enemy in a much worse situation that you can exploit. With all this information on the table, I think I'm gonna have to give it to the P90. It's extremely fast fire rate and extremely good recoil make it very easy to hip fire and push aggressively especially combined with its excellent handling. Its reload isn't great, and it's really the only disadvantage of this weapon, but its trade-off is a 50 round mag, so as long as you play it correctly, you can use that large mag to your advantage. On top of that, the P90 is one of the most affordable high tier weapons, only being beaten by the Grom with a 220k price, and technically the BB-19 at 200k if you even want to call that a high tier weapon. There are a lot of good weapons for CQC. As I mentioned before, the grenade launcher and shotguns can be very powerful in the right hands, but the P90 is just better overall, and can be used in just about any CQC situation and perform extremely well in it. I'm honestly surprised I don't see this weapon used more often. Only recently when I started looking into this gun did I realize how powerful it actually was. And I think because it's so rare and so different, players just tend to stick with simpler weapons. But I highly recommend you try and use this weapon whenever you find one, because they are very, very good. On to one of my favorite categories, sniping. Now, this one is pretty easy because there's only a few sniper rifles in the game. The Mosin, VSD, and M99. And I think the choice here is pretty obvious. The best sniper rifle in the game is the S85. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, it's actually the M99. Now I know some of you might say it's actually the VSD, and yeah, the Dragunov is an extremely powerful weapon, and it does do a few things better than the M99. It's a lot better at clearing out missions and AI because you have a 10 round mag you can use in semi-auto, and it's also a lot better at killing players without armor because those 10 rounds are all one-shots. But once players start to begin to use decent armor, the VSD is almost always a two-shot weapon, unless you hit the head, which is extremely hard. And sometimes, even if they're at full health with a heavy assault helmet, it won't even kill them then. Still, if you are very good with the VSD and can lead your shots easily, this isn't a problem. But for long-range sniping, especially against good players in a squad, the M99 performs like no other weapon in the game. It's a guaranteed kill no matter where you hit the player. It could be in their feet, their hand, it doesn't matter, they're gonna die. Sure, you do have to reload after every shot, but if you put an M99 against a VSD in a 200 meter plus fight with armor, the M99 will win just about every time. A good player with good positioning and decent aim can easily dispatch a 3-4 man squad with ease with one of these guns. Now I actually personally prefer to use the VSD over the 50 cal because I like the ability to clear out missions and I feel like it's more satisfying to smack somebody with full armor twice before they even know what's going on. But if I'm ever focused on just killing players and taking their stuff, especially if I'm fighting a squad solo, I'm gonna pick the M99 every time. The ability to quickly dispatch players from 300 meters with ease is something the VSD simply cannot do against good players with armor. If you've ever fought somebody who knows what they're doing with an M99, you know how powerful it can be. And if you've used it a decent bit, you will know firsthand how easy and fun it really is to use. Honestly, whenever bipods are implemented in the far future, I hope they nerf the M99 just a little bit. 
But honestly, making it a little more expensive and rare would be fine too, and they should probably do that first. But I think as of right now, the M99 is just a little bit too powerful, especially in the right hands. But until then, if you ever manage to get your hands on this beauty, give it a spin. It's very fun to use, and it will perform like nothing else. Now for this next category, we have economics, and this one is really about getting the most performance for your money. So obviously, the most important factor here is how much it costs to purchase the weapon from the trader and how well it's going to perform for that cost. Now, this category has a lot of options, so your pick might not be the same as mine, so just keep that in mind whenever I go through this category. Now, if you're going by purchase price, we might as well just start at the bottom with the cheapest weapon of them all, the IZSH-43S, or the short double barrel shotgun. Honestly, I find this weapon to be very fun to use. It has a lot more spread compared to normal shotguns because it's so short, so that means it's not really effective past 30 or so meters at all. But that also means it spreads a lot further, around 15 meters, compared to a normal shotgun, leading to some pretty hilarious situations where you rush a dude with full heavy assault armor and instantly one-tap him because you got lucky and a lot of pellets hit his legs and head. Other than that, though, it's really not a competitive weapon at all. Its range is heavily limited, and its handling and recoil are very poor. So anybody with decent armor and an assault rifle is going to kill you. Not to mention a sniper rifle and a good scope. And that's kind of how it goes for most of these cheap weapons. They can do good in some situations when you catch somebody off guard or at close range, but otherwise they're going to do poorly against a competent enemy. Weapons like this are the Makarov, the TTK, Scorp, S85, Berta M9, the longer double barrel M133. Uh, the exception to this is the C1911. This pistol is kind of unique because it does 50 damage to unarmored targets and only costs around 10k. It's pretty good at killing high tier bots as long as you shoot well, and even some decently geared players if you hit your shots, but still, it's not really competitive. I think most of you know what I'm going to pick at this point, and it's the UMR45. It only costs 30k, has great handling, great recoil, a pretty decent time to kill that is actually faster than the RPK and any other AK variant against armor, and the only drawback is that it has a pretty high reload at 4 seconds and is limited only to a 25 round mag. But that reload kinda doesn't matter as long as you're careful about how much you spray and that you have good cover to reload at, especially if the person you shot at is already dead. I've used the UMR a lot and I can say for sure that it is a competitive weapon and can even hang with some of the better weapons as long as you have decent positioning, aim, and good armor to back you up. Sure, it's not the best weapon, but for 30k, the performance is very, very good. Think of it this way. Yeah, the AR-4 is an amazing weapon, right? But for the price of that AR-4, or VSD, you could buy 10 UMRs. Sure, you might die slightly more using the UMR, but the times that you don't die, you're gonna profit more with less risk overall. So if you're ever a bit low on money, or are just starting out on a new server, pick up a UMR. And once you learn how to use it, it can carry you through the rest of the game with ease. And for the last category of the video, the Jack of All Trades. Now, you might think that this could be called the best weapon in the game, but as they say, Jack of All Trades, Master of None. While this theoretical weapon is good at most everything, a good player using the strengths of a better weapon for a specific role will almost always outperform you and most likely end you. So, with that in mind, a good all-rounder weapon needs to do as the name suggests. It needs to be good at the categories that I previously covered, it needs to have decent recoil and handling, it needs to be relatively common for players to find in the world, and I think the choice is pretty simple. It's the AK mod. It has a decent but slightly slow time to kill, decent recoil, great handling. It's relatively affordable from the trader at 50k. It has one of the best reload times in the game, with a full reload taking 3.5 seconds, and a tactical one only taking 2.75 seconds, the same as an AR-4. It's able to put almost any scope on it, and with the long range scope it's able to snipe the heads and faces of enemies at long range as long as your aim and lead is decent. And you could use it as a DMR to kill bots as long as you have the ammo. It's very common in the world, spawning almost everywhere and in structures on military bots. The AK is good in every category, but it's not the best in any of them. It's a true jack of all trades. So, what do you guys think of my choices? Were they wrong? Were they right? Or do you just prefer another weapon? Let me know in the comments, I read them all, and I'm especially interested about how you guys respond to this one. Also, all the data that I used for this video is in a spreadsheet, 
this is sort of my dead side guide baby, and I slowly add more and update it as time goes on. The only things that are not on the spreadsheet that I use in this video is recoil and handling patterns. Uh, I might find a way to express that as a number soon. Uh, we'll see if I get the time for that or not. Link in the description for that spreadsheet, and also my Discord if you want to be in there and ask me any questions or something. Which in that Discord I am doing a giveaway of 5 keys to Deadside, and I think when this video goes up there should be about a day left until that ends, so you could jump in there and see if you want to copy the game. So, subscribe if you want to see more. That's all I have for now. See you.